Hey everybody, Darren Krause here. Welcome to module two of Business 400, Driving Business Opportunity. So in module one, we kind of laid the foundation. You introduced yourselves, you talked about your professional identity. Then we did that first assignment, which was the blog. The purpose of that blog was really to um, establish the product the innovative product or service that you're going to be using basically throughout the course. So hopefully you had something that was truly innovative. Okay, so um, the the key to thinking about this is to think about the pro the value that that product actually offers. And I gave you that video last module to help you understand what a true value proposition is, uh, and then to understand whether or not this really is an innovative product, right? So. What we're looking for with the blue ocean mindset is something that kind of changes the game. So I had a couple of people talking to me about um, potential uh, uh, products and services like improvements on things or just offering something that's not really innovative. Um, if you say, you know, if you have an ice cream shop and you say, um, I'm going to do ice cream and I'm going to do, um, you know, strawberry and vanilla mix so i mix my ice cream together that's that's our competitive advantage is that really innovative because can the other person who sees that that's successful can't they just say well why don't we just mix it too right so innovative is really like saying we are thinking completely different from everybody else see people are people buy things in order to solve their problems and so um sometimes they don't even know what their problems are think about what iphone has done to the cell phone market we used to flip open call play the little snake game on our cell phone and now the iphone is everything and and the smartphone is getting smarter and smarter and uh, you know other companies are trying to to actually uh implement what they're doing but they can't do exactly everything right so they changed the game they changed the way everyone was looking at what we're carrying around in our pockets so hopefully that was your product uh, um your innovative product for module one and what we're going to do in module two is continue on with that so the first assignment that we're going to have in module two is your project outline so you're going to take that that product and you're actually going to go through the process of refining it and pitching it to people and getting it funded and that kind of thing and so we have to be thinking about all kinds of things so going to the um going to the actual let me see here let me get this Going to the um, the prompt, I want you to pay attention to these three elements, right? So the intended customer, the opportunities in the market, and the financial opportunity, these are the things that you're going to address in your outline. Here's what I'm really telling you. Everybody look at my face right now. Those should be the headings that you have on your outline, okay? Address the elements of the prompt address each of these so you're going to have the intended customer the opportunities in the market and the financial opportunity have those be your headings and then you're going to address each one of those looking at the questions and the and the the actual prompts underneath those headings to guide you don't include anything that isn't necessary don't include anything that isn't asked for just dive directly into those questions okay now here's what i'm going to do to help you here because these are very very important and you have to have some clarity on what these things actually are. So my advice when you're approaching this assignment is to do a couple of things. First of all, the first element, the first prompt here that they have is the intended customer. I do not want you to research that first. I want you to research the next one, which was opportunities in the market. And the reason why is because um, when companies are actually trying to figure out what they're going to do next, they don't necessarily start with the target market in mind. What they do is they scan the market in order to understand what kind of opportunities might be uh, popping up, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to look out there at, if you have that product in mind, you look out and say, okay, who is um, the all the people that could possibly buy this? Now, do we want everyone to buy our product? Of course, but the problem is it's not efficient to market to everyone. By the time we do everything it takes to get our market, our message out to everyone, we're not even going to make money on this product because we weren't efficient. 
So we have to figure out who the target market is. So when we're thinking about opportunities in the market, think about your product and think about everyone who's using this. Okay, and you say, okay, everyone who's using this, is that really a, a big group of people? And then as you start to segment down and understand um, who the market is, the truly um, targeted um, niche that you're going to be communicating to, when you start to narrow down and understand who that group is, you'll have a good feel for how big your market is actually going to be. So um, I am going to include a video. It'll be it'll be um, the first video before you get to the target market video. You're going to have two additional videos in this module, one that talks about financial opportunities and one that talks about targeting and how do you actually arrive at your target. So the first one is showing you how to think about what that opportunity really means or what what opportunities are really out there. So it more aggregately, we're saying what kind of problems are out there? What are people really what's heating up out there? What are people thinking? That kind of thing. Um, but you've already selected your product. So now you're thinking about who is who are all the people who are looking at this? And so or who are all the people who might want to buy this? Then as you start to narrow down who's likely to buy it, um, then you'll you'll get a good feel for really what your market opportunity is. And then when you get when you understand that, you can understand what the financial opportunity is. Based upon that, um, who how how do you really think your sales are gonna go? So if you say there's a million people in the United States who want to buy my product, but really who who could use my product, but really when I narrow it down, my target market is gonna be focused on a hundred thousand people, then you have to say, okay. Do I really think that I'm going to get sales? Do I really think I'm going to get that entire market? Um, what percentage of that 100,000 do I think I'm going to get? And you can you can gauge by looking at what has happened in the past when this company has put products out. What what kind of response do they normally have? Other other competition. How much other competition is there in the market? And what do they typically do whenever they put a product out? So that'll tell you kind of like how many sales you think you can have. And when you when you we're talking about top line when when we're getting into the financial opportunity right so it's like we want to talk about cash flow and top line revenue so in other words what kind of revenue are we going to generate so how many sales do you think you're going to have and what's this product or new innovation going to cost so if you think you can get 10,000 sales and it's going to cost $1 then you're going to make $10,000 right so you don't this doesn't have to be perfect you just have to have some kind of rationale for how you're approaching it so after you've looked at opportunities in the market, now you're going to look at your intended customer. And, and the other name for that is your target market. Why does this matter? It matters because everything a company does is focused on a target market. When you are trying, you're a, a company, even a nonprofit, is always trying to convince someone to do something. And... Um, all of your marketing is going to be focused around your target market. Everything that you do is a communication to your target market. If you think back to marketing class, um, the essence of basic marketing is the marketing mix, the four P's. If I said, tell me what marketing is about, you would say it's the four P's, right? Product, place, placement or place, uh, price and promotion. The, the actual activities that you do to promote the product. And so we call that a marketing mix because we mix that in a very specific way to communicate a very specific message to a very specific group of people, and that's a target market. So for those of you who think everybody wants this, my product is for anybody. Um, I coach chiropractors and I always say, who's your target market? And they say, anybody with a spine. That's not true because there are some people with a spine who will never go to a chiropractor, right? So when you're saying who is your intended customer, your target market, what you're saying is, who is my perfect customer, the person who's likely to buy my product? I am including another video to get you to think about that. What we're really saying is, um, we wanna kinda understand, when we think about a perfect customer, thinking about one customer, what are they likely to be demographically, right? So describe them demographically. Are they male, female, what, what, um, uh, what is their familial status? What do you think their familial status is? What do you think their employment status is? How much money do you think they make? Um, what religion do you think they are? You, you want to get that level of detail. 
Then you also want to think about the psychographics. How do they think? What's their belief system? What, what do they, um, what's their lifestyle like? What do they value? Um, because you're going to be communicating in terms of all of that stuff. And then uh, you think about the geographic elements. Where are they likely to live? And based upon that, how might they behave? Now, this video talks about all three of those things, but it leaves out another important element, which is the behavioral element. So how is your um, target market likely to behave? How often do they buy products? How are they, do they kick the tires or do they buy on impulse? Do they buy, do they um, uh, run out of their product completely before they rebuy or do they like to stock up? Um, how do they use the product? Are they hard on the product or do they, you know, are they light users? Do they share the product or do they hoard the product? So these are things that you got to um, kind of understand. And what you're doing when you're describing your target market is you're describing them in those terms. So when you are just when you're getting to this intended customer, you're going to say the intended customer would be those who are looking for blank. They're more likely to be this age, this gender, whatever it might be. Um, they enjoy doing this, that or whatever. They can be found anywhere in the country um, and they buy products this way and they use products this way. Right. So that's how you're going to describe that. It's very important that you nail that part of it so that you can understand what the marketing message is going to be. OK, because everything that you're going to communicate in your marketing message is going to go back to that. All right. So the next thing we're going to do in module two is we're actually going to do the Harvard Business Review simulation and journal. OK, so um, what we're saying here is. You're going to, I already set it up. You guys just go in and um, and do the simulation. You're going to work through and answer questions and make decisions in the simulation. And then you're going to do the journal. Again, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the requirements and rubric, and I want you to stay deadly focused on the, on the elements that are in that prompt. So there are some elements here, value creation and competitive advantage, thought process, discovery. Put those as your headings. Look at my face. Put those as your headings in your journal. Why? Because it's going to do a couple of things. Number one, it's going to keep you focused on that because I don't want you to write about anything that is not that. And then number two, um, it keeps you, it, it shows a flow and then it helps me to think what you're thinking. So I've had conversations with people where I'm like, I don't see this. And they're like, that's what I meant by this. How do I know that's what you meant? Stay focused and use these headings, right? So value creation and competitive advantage. Answer the questions here. How do you think the company did regarding value creation and can gaining a competitive advantage across generations? So you can say, I think the company did well um, on value creation. They, this, that, the other. Also, I think they did well or they did poorly on, on gaining that competitive advantage or sustaining that competitive advantage, and here's why. It's real simple. Just answer these questions and, and tell me why, right? So I think they did well because of this, that, whatever. I think they did well because of this, that, whatever. Your thought process. Did you think differently um, while you made your decisions in the simulation? Here's what we mean by thinking differently. We want to know, did you think in an innovative fashion? From the blue ocean strategy standpoint, what we're saying is, were you able to think outside of the box? That's what this really is thinking or, or saying. Did Were you able to think outside of the box or were you just kind of traditionally going with thinking about competition? Were you thinking about how to make your competition irrelevant or were you thinking about just how to beat them? Okay, so this is asking, I don't like the, the fact that this is saying, did you think differently? I would rather you answer this question. How did you think differently? throughout the simulation. Okay, so you need to have something there, right? This is what I was thinking. And this is how I approached it from a blue ocean strategy standpoint. Okay, the last thing, um, what have you discovered or learned after completing the first round of simulation? This is real simple to, to get focused on. I discovered that, finish it. I discovered that and finished that, right? Or after I finished this first round of the simulation, I discovered several things, this, that, or whatever, and then go into them in detail. So the way to be successful is to just directly address the things that we are after here. 
I don't want you to get off in the weeds. That's something that people tend to do. And I, and I think that it causes frustration whenever I'm grading and they get mad at me, but they're not addressing what I'm looking at, what we're looking for, right? So this isn't hard. Just stay focused and answer that question, answer these questions that we're asking, okay? So that's really it for module two. Um, along the way, if you have any questions, I wanna encourage you all again, the quickest way to get a response from me is to actually use my cell phone number and text me. Don't call me because I don't answer any phone calls. I don't want to get the IRS scam or somebody trying to get on my computer to fix a Microsoft problem um, or take the chance of answering a call from my mom or something like that. So um, just text me and say, hey, this is so-and-so in your um, Business 400 class. I had a question about this. I might be able to answer it via text or I might say, hey, that's a richer discussion. Let's, is there a time that we can get together? And I want to also say, don't worry about what time it is, because if it's late and you we're all from different time zones, if you're working on homework, I just might be eight up. So if you ask that question, um, I, I might be able to answer it right then and there. And if I'm up, I'll answer it. If not, you haven't disturbed me. I'll just wait until I wake up and I'll see that text message and I'll be able to answer it for you or set up a time to talk. OK, so do not hesitate to use it. I'm telling you, use my cell phone. I've been teaching for 21 years. I'm going to say thousands of students have my um, have my uh, cell phone number and I get text messages all the time from people um, trying to get some questions answered. OK, so I think everything here is pretty smooth. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. Good luck, everybody.